Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Green Lantern, 3D movie, thoughts. Okay, so let's just start with Hector. Why is he in this movie? Other than the fact that Green Lantern needs a ride, you know, after he finds the alien, he doesn't do anything for the rest of the movie. He is not interesting. Okay, apparently he's in the comics, and yeah, so they put him in here. That's it. He's he's utterly useless to the rest to the entire film. What is with the Superman ripoff with the scene on the balcony? You know, and he just lands and he's like, "Hello, ma'am." You know, right out of Superman. What is that? That does have the one clever thing in the entire movie, one clever line, I should say, of, you know, of course it's you, Hal. Did you think I couldn't, uh, you know, recognize you just because you had that, you know, mask on? I guess the mask doesn't work. I personally thought it was intentionally that distracting just to get people to not notice that it's clearly Hal Jordan, you know. Why else would you possibly go with such a ridiculous looking mask? Why does... If the, I'm expecting that you stay past the credits. If you didn't... Well, what you missed didn't make any sense. So anyway, why did he put on the ring? I'm, I'm guessing that this, takes, this scene takes place after the rest of the movie. It doesn't seem like it could take place before that point, because he turns all the yellow. So it couldn't take place before that scene near the end where, you know, we get the second thing of, yeah, we are the core! And the first time that happened, I was cracking up in the theater. You know, that was one of the few laughs this movie got from me, and it was not intentional. Why does he put on the ring? Why isn't it just destroyed? You know what? Apparently, it's in the comics. I get that. That's fine, but it's not established in the movie. Sinestro in the movie is not established as someone who wants more power or who takes ridiculous chances in order to... You know, yes, he's the one trying to get them to use the ring, but the threat is gone. Why would he... You know, and obviously, you know, Parallax is conquered by, you know, using the gravitational pull of a sun, you know, because, or the sun, indeed, because that was established during the training, that, you know, you could use that, you could do that. Why doesn't Hal, you know, he recharges his ring once in the entire movie, and it's not like right before fighting Parallax, either. That could have been such an impactful scene, you know, like, right after the pep talk, just a big moment with, you know, and him, and when he does recharge it that one time, he doesn't even use the oath. Isn't that kind of a big deal, you know, using the oath? The one time he does use the oath, other than the first time, is, you know, at least supposed to be good. That that was, that's one of the places where the script doesn't completely fail. There are too many cliches to list. It's it's so... It goes through all of the stuff that you just expect. You know, you have the hero supposedly giving in to the, you know, the villain. You're supposed to be sitting there like, No! Don't do it! And everyone is just like, We know what's going to happen. It's not... Of course he it betrays him. And of course that was part of the plan. You know, we've seen this before. Done better, I might add. At one point, Hal announces that he can't be a Green Lantern because I'm not fearless, and that's the job description. That's the one thing, you know, apart from having responsibility and, you know, being a good fighter and all these other things, that's the one thing. Wasn't he kind of fearless in that first scene? I mean, yes, he was, you know, suddenly paralyzed by the fact that they're ripping off Top Gun, but other than that, he seemed pretty fearless. He was risking his life. If the ejector seat hadn't worked, he'd have died. And for what? To prove that these jets weren't as, you know, weren't all they were cracked up to be? 
Rethink your priorities, Jordan, please. I would like to see more of the Green Lantern Corps, you know, like the two times I see them in action, they just fail right off the bat, you know. Not even entirely sure how they manage to accidentally, you know, release Parallax. I mean, did they think he had already escaped? Why exactly was... I mean, clearly he was imprisoned when they first find him there. And I get that, you know, he, like, uses his power. And maybe him using his powers to, you know, Your soul is mine on them. Maybe that's why he can escape. But why were they there? Why did they go there? Why did they... And did... How did they not know that the planet was like hollow or something. Personally, if I'm gonna land somewhere and I'm going up against the greatest force of evil that, you know, I know about and I know about the entire universe, I'm gonna check if the place I land is safe, just, just as a very base precaution. And, you know, and the one time that, you know, once he actually gets to Earth, and he starts, you know, there's this one shot where he maybe, I don't know, maybe a dozen souls, human souls, just... I don't want to sound callous, but I didn't care. I was supposed to care, I knew that, but I couldn't muster up the effort for the movie. It just... The same thing when, you know, Lois, I'm sorry, Carol was about to be injected with the yellow syringe of feariness. I wasn't that scared for her. What was even up with her and Hal's relationship? I didn't really see them as having that realistic of, you know, a kind of re relationship that they were like really into each other. Why didn't she even pursue him when she like you know, drops one line she's not supposed to there and, you know, when they're on the dance floor and he just leaves and starts getting beat up. And that's, of course, the one time he uses his powers other than, you know, like during training and, you know, to save people from parallax to beat up the people who were kind of right about beating him up. I, I Were we supposed to hate those three guys? Because I didn't. I was kind of, yeah, you really did screw those people's lives up. What, what was that? C couldn't you have made your point without costing other people's jobs, costing a lot of money, taxpayer money? I, I'd have liked that. I'd have liked that a lot. I suppose that's more or less what there is. Yeah, just the one thing, if they do make a sequel, <laughs> uh, even Hollywood wouldn't be that retarded. If they do, they do have a clear villain in Sinestro, and if there's one thing that we know Mark Strong can really do well, it's play a bad guy. So, you know... I was actually kind of happy that, you know, this is like one of the three roles he has where he isn't a bad guy, so, you know, that was nice. Because he can actually play a good guy. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, it's now the day after I watched Green Lantern. There was so much stupid in this movie that some of it kind of just overwhelmed me to the point where I... Yeah, I forgot to say it in the other video. Bite me. I might have called the friend character Hector. Honestly, it's because the friend character has so little personality that I forgot his name if he was assigned one. Hector, unless I'm terribly wrong here again, is the scientist. Let's talk about Hector. He goes into this laboratory, you know, does an autopsy on an alien being, and he just 
leaves, you know, no kind of, you know, decontamination, no tests run on him, no real vow of silence. Later on, he actually does start, you know, spilling the beans, and, you know, it's only because his father overhears that he's actually stopped. You know, what if he had told that to a reporter? What if the father hadn't been there? You know, what if, yeah. And what exactly are his powers? Oh, and just before I get into that, you gotta love this. You know, he takes a blood test and he just, you know, into the computer, and the computer doesn't just tell him that, you know, boring results. No, it's, you know, it's animated, the this sequence, you know, Hollywood cliches. The second time he watches that, is it any different? Is it, like, more aggressive? I didn't really notice any kind of difference between the two times that he looked at it. Why doesn't he go to try to get help or something? Did they even chain him up when they bring him back in? What was the point of him being able to, you know, see people's memories by touching their skin? He does it to Angela Bassett, who has this big backstory, and nothing comes of it. He doesn't use that against I I thought he was gonna do some kind of Barbas-like thing of, you know, I will use your fears against you, but no, he just keeps using telekinesis. So what was the point of that? Okay, it tells him that Hal Jordan is the Green Lantern. I, I guess he was fooled by the ridiculous mask. They could have done that some other way. They didn't need this power. My guess is this power was also in the comics, and they just really wanted to, you know, they didn't want anyone to be able to accuse them of not following the comics in any respect possible. What is the point of the... And what exactly are the limitations also of this mind-reading ability of his, he seems to intercept thoughts, negative thoughts, directed towards him. Is that supposed to be some kind of, Is that related to the, the fear thing? What does fear have to do with negative thoughts directed towards you? Is it... Does Parallax feed off of other people's negative vibes towards him? Is that some kind of... I also don't entirely get how, you know... Stealing souls has much of anything to do with fear, but whatever. Parallax, that not name might be from the comics. Personally, I think it sounds like either an incredibly strong, incredibly potent, you know, laxative, or a laxative that also, you know, paralyzes you. I don't know. The Guardians. What is the deal with those capes? They're like hundreds of feet long. You, you couldn't possibly walk around in those. Do they ever leave those, you know, poles that are sitting atop? You know, how do they get to the bathroom? Inquiring minds want to know. And why do they all look like grumpy old people? There are some scenes that just have no impact or no consequence to them. Again, Hector. He tosses, you know, psychically. It's not like Maybe people didn't know, but still, a student gets tossed onto the floor from his seat, and he wasn't even, like, on the ground f level either, you know. He probably got hurt. Nothing comes of that. There's no, like, you know, the senator doesn't pull his son aside and say, what happened in class? You know, it's like, he goes to this fancy dinner, I'm pretty sure that scene is after the student tossing. Seriously, did just is this some alternate reality where suddenly that doesn't matter? Has you know violence against students been you know brought back into? The, I personally, I love just noting the reactions. Especially there's one chick that just goes like, "Oh my god, that's just hilarious to you know to try to notice her if you." May God have mercy on us all, if you actually watch this a second time. She's like uh, around the middle of the frame. She's, she stands up. She's still near her seat. I think she like gets up uh, out of her seat and forgets how to act. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.